This is going to be an update to a tutorial I made already. So since the process is mostly the same, I'm going to be using majority of the previous video and editing in the new information when necessary. This will not only be an update on the process, but some other important side information that I have found along the way since that upload. I think that you will find this video informational even if you have already watched the previous iteration. So let's move on to the information. Hello everyone, and today we're going to be talking about how to reduce or remove the preprint purge on Bamboo Labs machines. I have a script printed out to try and keep this all in order. It's going to be hard to try and read it on my desk and then not get lost. Personally, I have a P1P. I don't know how different the A1 series printers are, but the X1, P1P, and P1S should all apply and probably any other big box style printers that they make in the future. After having the original video out for some time, it has been confirmed by the community that the code for the A1 and A1 Mini is a bit different. That is to be expected. However, I looked through at least the A1's start G code, and it still has some of the same lines. They'll be in different places, and I cannot confirm their function, so just adjust those with caution in this case. If you want to see these printers on the channel, I can only make a few suggestions. First would be to email either Bamboo's marketing email or general inquiry email and suggest reaching out to me, either through email or through the comments below, though I will be very cautious of that method. Another way you could support me and another way Bamboo Labs could find me is through my Maker World account. I am at Bozeman12 on Maker World. I do not have many models at the moment, but hope to add some more soon. I don't know how it all works, but I believe by downloading, liking, and importing my models using my uploaded print profiles into Bamboo Studio, that all gives me points, which can help me get discount cards and that can help me afford these printers in the future. Unfortunately, I think the majority of my models are going, will be, and are kind of specific, but I would appreciate it if you would check it out either way. This last way is more of a question for now. Would you be interested in community funding my videos in any way? Would you be interested in anything like a Patreon where I could post extra content and try to come up with some other incentives as well? Let me know in the comments, but personally I am not very hopeful. Anyway, back to the tutorial. So let's quickly recap on the issue before we go into actually fixing it. We are talking about the purge that happens at the beginning of every print. This amount can be minuscule and cost pennies by comparison if you're printing big things. As a quick note, the small cost probably went up since the making of the original video due to the cause of the new problem warranting this new video. But if you're doing a lot of individual parts, especially if they are smaller, then you could be wasting decent money even when using PLA. I was working on guitar picks and experimenting with modeling and 3D printing them. When you're printing a single guitar pick, the printer can be dumping almost as much plastic as it ends up printing. Other than that fact, it can just be kind of annoying and unnecessarily wasteful at times. I've heard a few reasons on why the purge happens, but typically none of them matter if you're just simply paying attention. So with all that said, let's get into the tutorial. To get started, we need to open Bamboo Studio. Nothing needs to be done on the actual printer itself. The version I'm currently using is not that anymore. I am now currently using 1.9.3.5, though I believe that there is already an update for version 1.9.5 or something like that. Keep in mind that some things may change in future updates of the program. Let's hope they don't change for the worse for some reason. Open a new project. We should currently be on the prepare section for slicing. The first button we're looking for is the extremely simplified pen and paper. It should be right next to the printer profile drop down. Additionally, it is, should be right underneath the printer tab gear. Click the pen and paper. We should start on the basic information tab. We want the machine G code tab. Now, unfortunately, there is no control F find function and we can't expand these menus. So we have to work with these the way they are. We want to focus on the machine start G code section right here. While hovering your cursor over the box, you want to scroll down. We want to look for a line that says M412 and next to it a little ways that says turn on filament runout detection. Here it is. This is the scroll position currently in the current version if that helps you find it. Now we want to focus on the line that says G1 
E50 and F200 right here. If you want to reduce the purge amount but still want some, you need to focus on the E value. Changing it to 25 will reduce the purge by half, but personally I use E15. Now here is the main point where I need to interrupt again. There seems to be an additional extrusion line added now since the creation of the first video. I have done some testing and this seems to only affect the bucket purge, not the initial line purge, or I think the uh, flow test that happens in the back, or whatever that is. If you think I am wrong, please let me know and I will do some triple checking, though also make sure that you are adjusting the right extrusion code lines. The only reason why I doubt myself in this video now is because I was also working with TPU at the time of finding out this new issue. Sometimes TPU oozes and sometimes it oozes from the nozzle even when it's just sitting there not actively purging when the nozzle is heating up, cooling down, heating up again and all of that. So because of that I am like 2% double guessing myself but I'm pretty sure that this is a proper fix. Anyway. All of the steps are the exact same, except now we also need to adjust the second line. So here we are on the exact spot where the first line is. This is our original first line here, and we, on our partial purge, we would adjust this to something like E15. Now, if we click the down arrow, and then we go one, two, three, four lines down, we then have this second purge line. So, I suggest that you set this E value simply to 0 and work purely with this line if you want any purge at all. Because remember that these are two separate purges and if you set them both to E15, it will be equivalent to one code being E30 because for some reason they added this second purge. I don't know exactly why they did, but if you want to avoid the uh, overdone purge, this is what I suggest. If you want to get rid of the purge entirely, there are a few ways of doing that. One way is to delete the line, but I don't suggest that. It's good to keep it around, just in case. Another way is to comment out the line. Normally in programming, this would be done with forward slashes, but unfortunately it's different here. So instead of forward slashes, it's simply done with a single semicolon in front of the line. So that's the dot and the comma symbol, not the dot dot symbol. Having the line commented out causes the program and the printer to skip the line while still having it written out for future reference or use. The third way, and this is the way that I personally did it, was you just simply set the E value to zero. Once you're done making the changes for the function you desire, don't hit the X button quite yet. You should save your new code as a printer profile using this floppy disk SD card icon right here. This will bring up the save menu. This is already a copy, but normally this is how it would show up for if you're just making a copy of your basic printer profile. So I'm gonna get a warning here saying that I can't use this. Uh, let's just change it like this. Make sure to click user preset if it's not already selected so that you can use this profile on all other projects. If you save it inside project, I believe it will only be able to be used in this one thing. It may not even be saved if you don't save the project. So then once you're done, you hit OK. And you can close this menu now if you don't want to make the other function as well. But as you can see, I have made mine already. So when you close this menu, it should automatically default to your newly created printer profile. If it doesn't, you can simply click on the drop down and it'll bring up a list of all your other ones. So, just for example, we can go to no flush, which is what I would normally use. And you're ready to print without wasting unnecessarily more material than you needed to before. So that is the end of the original video. However, I do still have one more observation that you probably want to know about. I put this as a pinned comment or something like that in the original video, but it still seems to be a problem at the time of this recording. But also keep in mind that there were some slicer updates that I did not try before recording. So you will have to let me know in the comments if this is still a problem for you too.
When using this start G code, for some reason you have to export manually using the SD card. When sending the prints and the code through the internet features, it doesn't seem to keep the changes, and it does its normal routine anyway. My guess is that this is either due to the calibration tick box while sending and its function overriding the changes, or that for some reason the Bamboo servers remove the G-code changes for the printer's safety, even though there are other parts of their programs that already do this as well, to prevent malicious behavior when sharing files. Either way, as far as I know, we are still stuck using the SD card export method if you want to conserve that bit more of plastic. Thank you for watching this video, I hope you found it informational. If you did, please consider leaving a like. We are getting closer to the amount of subscribers needed to start getting paid. On top of that, this is normally a music channel, but we also do, also do, so a lot of 3D printing related content as well. So if that all sounds good, please consider subscribing. That's all I have to say for now, so I'm gonna say bye bye